All right, in this last section that we are going to cover of chapter seven, chapter seven, section four, we're going to talk about finding the area of a triangle. Now, you're used to finding the area of a triangle where we use the formula area equals one half base times height. Um, this is true for any triangle where B is the base and H is the height drawn to that base. So the triangle doesn't need to be a right triangle. We can find the area of any triangle using that information. For example, if I have an obtuse triangle, this would be the base, and this measure perpendicular to the base would be my height. So that I have the area is 1 half base times height. If the height is not given, or only the lengths of three sides are given, then adjustments have to be made to the theorem in order to find the area of the triangle. What if we're given information on side angle side? Well, consider this triangle where I know two sides in the included angle. In general, the theorem can be used if H can be related to the two sides in the angle we know. If I use that SOHCAHTOA mnemonic, I know that the measure of angle C is related to side H and side A by the sine function. Or I can say that sine of C is equal to H over A. When I solve this equation for H, I get that H is equal to A times the sine of C. In general, this tells me that where I have one half base times height, I can replace height with A sine C. So that I have one half AB times the sine of C. Now this is going to be true, this product, this pattern, is going to be true for any of the angles of the triangle. The product of the sine of an angle is equal to half the, of, Ah, the area of a triangle is equal to the product of the sine of any angle with one half the product of the other two sides. So I can take one half the product of the length of two sides and the sine of their included angle. Here we have it, one half AB sine C or one half BC sine A or one half AC sine B. Okay, let's put that to use, and then we're gonna look at an alternate area formula of our triangle. I'm sorry, I picked that up. We had a glare, and then now we've gotta refocus. There we go. Okay, so find the area, K, of a triangle for which I, I know side B, side C, and angle A. Well, let's just think about this. If I have A, B, C, and I know side B is eight, and I know side C is five, and I know that angle A is 40 degrees. I have side, angle, side. Oh, sorry guys. I have side, angle, side. Things are rounded correctly. Um, Express as a decimal, rounded to two decimal places, and labeled correctly. Now, when I do area, my units are going to be squared because I'm multiplying two dimensions together. In this case, we think of base times height. So, for example, feet times feet is feet squared, inches times inches is inches squared, etc., etc. Okay, uh, here we go. My area formula, area or K, is equal to one half. In this case, B times C times the sine of A. So I have 1 half times 8 times 5 times the sine of 40 degrees. Well, 8 times 5 is 40, and half of 40 is 20. So what I have is 20 times the sine of 40 degrees. Here's where I have to do a little bit of approximation. I'm going to plug this into my calculator, round it to two decimal places. I get 12.86. I need correct units. I wasn't given units, so I'm just going to say units squared. Or I could have said units squared like that. Uh, when just to, We're going to stop and aside before we do Heron's formula. I want to give you a couple of definitions really quickly. Um, when we are talking about area of a triangle, with some of your application problems, there are some other areas that you're going to find. You know triangle. Triangle you're good with. Triangle I can't actually spell today. Triangle. 
A sector of a circle. If you have a circle, a sector of a circle is the area found between two radii or two rays on the circle. This is a sector of a circle. It looks like a shape of like a pizza. And then you have, so this is a sector of a circle. And then we have segment of a circle. So to think segment of a circle, think about a chord that cuts off an arc, subtends an arc. This is a segment of a circle. Segment of a circle. Now you can use the concept of area of a triangle with the sector of a circle to find a segment. Because if I went, for example, to the center of my circle and made this a sector, you can see that the sector of my circle includes a triangle and that segment. Okay, that gives you kind of a heads up toward some of the application problems you're going to find in the homework. Okay, so we did our area formula for side angle side. What if we know all three sides? Well, if you happen to know the length of all three sides of a triangle, you can use what we call Heron's formula. It's named after a mathematician. Heron's formula theorem tells us that the area K of a triangle with sides A, B, and C, and this uses the idea of semi-perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around any figure. Semi means half. So semi-perimeter is half the distance around your triangle. So to find the semi-perimeter of your triangle, you're going to take half the sum of the sides. Heron's formula is the square root of, and then you take the product of the semi-perimeter times the difference of that semi-perimeter and each one of the sides. All right. For example, I have a triangle 964. It's an isosceles triangle. All three side measures are different. Um, four, this looks like six, that looks like nine. I want the area of this triangle. Well, the first thing I need to find is the semi-perimeter. So one half the sum of the sides of the triangle. The sum of the sides of my triangle here are 19. So that's 19 halves or 19.5. That's my semi-perimeter. To find the area of this triangle, K, I'm going to take the square root of my semi-perimeter and then I'm going to subtract each side from that semi-perimeter. So 9.5 minus 9 is 0 0.5. 9.5 minus 6 gives me 3.5. And 9.5 minus 4 gives me 5.5. I'll find this product. And then I take the square root. We're going to round to two decimal places. And don't forget to mark it as being units squared. All right, a couple of application problems. A painter needs to cover a triangular region with the sides of 24 feet and 18 feet. The angle between the two sides is 100 degrees. Find the area of the region to the nearest tenth of a square foot. Nearest tenth of a square foot. So we are measuring in square feet. We have this angle of 100 degrees. One side is 24 feet long. One side is 18 feet long. And we want to paint this whole area, this triangle. I know side angle side, so the formula I'm going to use is one half the product of the two given sides times the sine of the angle. Plug all that into my calculator. I round it to the nearest tenth of a square foot. Don't forget, give correct units. And finally, a painter needs to cover a triangular region with sides that measure 40 feet, 50 feet, and 46 feet. Each can of paint will cover 175 square feet. How many cans of paint do we need? So we've got to find the area and then do something with it. Okay, we know three sides, so we need to find that semi-perimeter. 
We've got 40 plus 50 is 90, so that's a half of 136 feet. Um, that gives me a semi-perimeter of 68 feet. So when I set up my Heron's formula, I have 68, and then I subtract each of my sides from that 68. 68 minus 40, 68 minus 50, and 68 minus 46. Take the square root of that. Now I'm just going to round this to the nearest square foot because I'm, I'm needing to figure out how many cans of paint. So when I take the square root of that, I get 868 square feet that need to be painted. Each can of paint will paint 175 square feet, which means I'm going to need, let's see, 868 divided by 175. I'm going to need 4.96 cans of paint, right? Well, no, I can't buy 0.96 cans of paint. I'm going to need five cans of paint. Now, notice that with application problems, you need to answer them reasonably. For example, if you are trying to see how many buses you need to reserve for the class trip, I can't reserve half a bus. It doesn't matter if I just have three students left over. I've got to get one more whole bus for them. So make sure that when you round, you round appropriately according to your application involved.